Summary of Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. The story takes place in San Francisco in the year 1992, after a huge war called World War Terminus has killed most of nature and left the Earth's surface dangerously irradiated. People who are smart and talented are sent to Mars and other worlds to live there. Those who can't pass the tests are left on Earth to die. Since most animals were killed in the war, having a pet is the ultimate sign of wealth. Also, science has made it possible to make androids that look so much like people that it's almost impossible to tell them apart. On other worlds, these robots are used as workers or helpers. However, some of them get away and live on Earth as people. The police on Earth try to find these robots and retire them, which means to kill them. Suspects are given complicated psychology tests by the police. One of these tests, the Voigtkampf, is meant to measure how naturally empathetic people are. Since robots aren't thought to have empathy, they can't pass the test. At the start of the book, Rick Deckard, a veteran police officer, is thinking about getting a real animal to show off to his neighbors. He and his wife, Iran Deckard, already have an electric sheep. On the other hand, we meet John Isidore, a special man with mental problems who lives alone in an empty apartment block in San Francisco. Isidore is a member of Mercerism, which is a strange church. Followers of Mercerism enjoy empathy by holding the handles of an empathy box, which lets them feel what other people are thinking and feeling. Wilbur Mercer started Mercerism. When his followers see him, he looks like an old man in a robe going up a steep hill. Rick is called to the police station where he works. Dave Holden, one of his co-workers, was just shot and taken to the hospital by a robot named Polakov, who Dave was trying to find. Polakov and five other androids have made their way to San Francisco from Mars, where they were sent to do simple jobs. Nexus 6 is the model for the androids. It is a very lifelike and unpredictable type of android. The company that makes the androids, the Rosen Organization, wants Rick to retire them quickly and quietly. Rick flies to Seattle to meet business executive Eldon Rosen and his niece Rachel Rosen at the Rosen Association building. Rick gives Rachel the Voigtkampf test after she asks him to. He slowly figures out that Rachel is actually a robot. When he says this about Rachel, she and Eldon deny it and say that the Voigtkampf test isn't very good. But Rick doesn't back down, and it becomes clear that Rachel is, in fact, a robot. Eldon says in a cool voice that Rachel didn't know she was anything but human because she had been given fake memories. John Isidore, who works for a company that fixes electric animals, meets Pre Stratton, a strange woman. Pre doesn't seem to know much about Earth's culture. For example, she doesn't know who Buster Friendly, a popular TV host, is. When Rick gets back to San Francisco, he meets a Soviet police officer who says he is also looking for androids. Rick figures out that the policeman is really Polakov, so he shoots him. Next, Rick follows Luba Luft, a robot, to the opera house. Rick meets Luba and finds out that, like Rachel, she thinks she is a person. All of a sudden, Luba points a laser gun at Rick and calls the cops. Rick has never been to this police station before, but Krams takes him there. At the station, Krams, Garland, and Phil Resch, who work with him, question him. When Rick is alone with Garland in the police station, Garland says that Resch is really an android but doesn't know it. If Resch finds out the truth, he'll probably kill himself. Then Resch goes back into the room, kills Garland, and tells Rick that Garland is an android. Resch doesn't seem to know that he's anything other than a person. Together, Resch and Rick sneak out of the police station, which Resch says was built and is staffed by only bad androids. Rick is upset and confused by what he has seen. He can't help but wonder if he is really a person. Back at the opera house, Resch and Rick find Luba's trail and follow it to a museum. There, Resch kills Luba in a brutal and quick way. Rick and Resch plan to test each other to see if they are human or robot. Rick figures out that Resch is human, but he is a very cold, cruel kind of person. Resch figures out that Rick is, in fact, a person. While this is going on, John Isidore meets Pre. 
She says that she and her robot friends are from Mars, which is a sad and empty place. She asks Roy Beatty and Ermgard Beatty, her last two robotic friends, to move in with her and John. Rick has earned $3,000 by killing three robots. He spends his money right away on a real pet goat. After that, he and Iran hold their empathy boxes together and listen to Mercer say that it's hard to live a moral life in the modern world. Rachel Rosen calls Rick, and they decide to meet in a hotel room. Rachel and Rick get drunk in the room. Rachel tries to talk Rick out of getting rid of the last three androids. Rick and Rachel have sex, and then Rachel tells Rick the truth, she's known for a long time that she's an android, and she's been having sex in secret with every android bounty hunter in the city to make sure they care about their prey. Except for Resh, no bounty hunter has ever kept killing robots after having sex with her. Rick is so angry that he says he will kill Rachel, but then he realizes that he can't. Rick follows the robots to John Isidore's flat and finds them there. In the flat, Pri, Roy, and Ermgard watch a TV show in which Buster Friendly says that Mercerism is a hoax and that Wilbur Mercer is just a movie extra standing behind film sets. John is upset by this news, but he says that Mercerism will keep going. Roy, Ermgard, and Pri are all killed when Rick gets to the flat. John Isidore's last words from him are, don't take it so hard. Rick has set a record by killing six androids in 24 hours. Now that he has a lot of money, he can buy pets. He doesn't go back to Iran. Instead, he flies to the Oregon deserts, which used to be beautiful woods. Rick takes some futuristic drugs in the desert and has a dream in which he joins with Mercer and tries to climb a steep hill together, but can't quite make it. Rick is amazed to find a toad in the desert, which is a rare and strange animal. He takes the toad back to Iran, but the people there quickly figure out that it's an electric fake. Rick goes to sleep because he is tired and confused. Iran calls the pet store while he sleeps and buys electric flies for the toad to eat. She says, my husband is devoted to it. About the author. Philip K. Dick grew up in San Francisco, a city that would be a big part of his novels and short tales. His mother raised him for most of his youth. When he was 12, he started writing science fiction stories, and his teachers noticed that he was good at building tension and telling gripping stories. In 1951, he went into business writing science fiction stories. After that, he sold a lot of stories to science fiction magazines and wrote a few books, none of which did very well. In 1963, he wrote one of his most famous books, The Man in the High Castle, a work of science fiction about a world where the Nazis won World War II. This book changed his luck. The book got Dick the Hugo Award, which is the greatest honor for science fiction in the United States. Dick wrote dozens of books and hundreds of short stories over the next 20 years. Even though many of these got cult followings, none of them did as well in terms of reviews or sales as The Man in the High Castle. In the 1970s, Dick's mental health got worse, mostly because he tried out LSD, mescaline, and other drugs. He died in 1982, when he was poor and sad. Ironically, 1982 was also the year that Blade Runner, which was based on his book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, became the first well-known movie version of one of his works. In the 1980s and 1990s, Dick's books started to be taken seriously by the literary world as a whole, not just by sci-fi fans. More than two dozen of his short stories or books have been turned into films so far, including Minority Report, 2002, Blade Runner, 1982, Paycheck, 2003, Total Recall, 1990, Remade in 2012, A Scanner Darkly, 2006, and Next, 2007. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.